In this video, we're gonna show you how to install emulators on your NVIDIA Shield. In particular, the uh, toilet paper roll version, which does not have USB ports, but it performs just as good as the Pro version does. And we'll set up RetroArch. We're also gonna check out some other emulators that actually, in my mind, perform better than a lot of the stock ones within RetroArch. So sit back, have a listen, and this should get you step by step, getting you gaming on your NVIDIA Shield in no time. So all I did was I inserted my micro SD card into my computer, just make sure it is formatted. And all I did was I added folders for my different ROMs. So I have my Sega Saturn games, PlayStation games, Dreamcast games. .cdi files were great for uh, Dreamcast. For PlayStation, I experimented with quite a few. I found that if you have the PBP files, it's gonna be the easiest way. If you have bin queues, it's a lot more work. Um, PlayStation 2 does not run well. PSPs should be .CSOs. Super Nintendo can be zipped up. It's fine if they're already zipped, don't unzip them. That's just easier and it will save less, it'll save more room. Um, Sega CD, bin and Q should work fine. Sega 32X are rard up. And then uh, Nintendo 64.N64 files. Um, just do a Google search. You can find your ROMs there. I just can't show you in this video. And um, once you have them, you just put them on your micro SD, and then we're going to put the micro SD back into the NVIDIA Shield and then boot it up. All right, so here I am on my NVIDIA Shield. And the first thing you want to do actually is just set up your controller. You are going to need a controller paired up. So just go over to Remotes and Accessories and then add a new Bluetooth device. You can see over here I have my 8 bit dough already set up, but it's not connected yet. So what I'll do is I'll just hit Start and A on my controller while it tries to find it, and then I'll get a quick rumble, and then I'll see connected there. You do need a Bluetooth controller. You can easily get um, like an Xbox One controller or a um, PlayStation 4 style controller or buy an aftermarket controller. So if you just saw, I went to the Google Play Store and what we want to do is download RetroArch. Um, we have our ROMs ready. They're in our micro SD card. They're in the um, they're in the actual NVIDIA Shield. And then we want to search for RetroArch. Let's click it and go ahead and install. This is gonna take a little bit of time. It's asking if I had a gamepad, yes. So go ahead and get this started. Great, we now have it installed. It's gonna ask, would you like to give it access to your external storage? Yes, allow that so we can get to your ROMs. Should look like this to get started. And now we're in and it should see my controller, there it is. And now it sees my controller and here I am. Feel free to mess with some of these settings. You can actually download like different skins and things like that. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the online updater and then the core updater. And this is where you're gonna find all your cores. So if you wanna install Daphne, if you're gonna have Daphne games and things, install the Daphne core, also known as an emulator. If you're gonna be doing like CPS games, like Capcom games, CPS 1, 2, Neo Geo games, MAME, just make sure you have the right arcade set. You can Google online, they'll tell you like which MAME to install for what arcade set you have. Then you're gonna get into consoles over here. You got 20 Atari, Atari 5200, 7800, Atari Lynx, Jaguar. Um, but for this video, we're gonna do the main ones, like the Nintendos, the Genesis, the um, PP, uh, P PSPs, PlayStation, things like that. So I think we haven't missed any yet. Okay, so portables, Nintendo, there you go. Uh, Nintendo, you can go ahead and install either this one or a lot of people like Nestopia. Um, you just click it and it go when go ahead and install it. For Nintendo 64, you probably want the middle one, MuPin 64 Plus, not the one, the GLES, the second one. So we'll go ahead and install that. And then uh, for Super Nintendo, I like SNES 9X, install that. And then for Sega, um, this one works really well, the Sega Genesis Plus GX. And then for Sega Saturn, I'm gonna show you something different there. Uh, for PlayStation, you definitely wanna do the rearmed right here. And then PS2 is not gonna run very well. And then PSP, I'm actually gonna show you something different. Same with Dreamcast. I skipped Dreamcast because I have a different emulator I wanna use for that. But you can install Flycast here if you wanna stay within RetroArch. So now once you've done that, you now have to sh now you have the emulator installed, now you just need to install the ROMs. So that's really easy, just go over here to Plus, scan the directory and your SD card is actually going to be under storage and it's going to be this the first folder usually and it's like a letter and a number you click in there and there you go you can see that same file system I was messing with earlier in the video on my computer 
The easiest one to do for me would be Sega SNES. And you see I have my box art here and everything. All I would do now is click scan this directory. But I've actually already done it for this video. So you just click A right here and it's going to go ahead and scan it. So once it's done, it's going to look like this. You go back, back, back. And if you see now, I have an SNES controller there because I've scanned the directory and it's like, hey, you have all these games. And this is pretty much all the SNES games. And it sees the box art as well. Again, you can customize this if you want, but as you see, if I just go ahead and hit run, pick the emulator I want, it should start running the game very easily. And there you go, I'm playing SNES games. Not that, not that crazy. Um, but you can do that through all your emulators and, and different directories if you want and set it all up. Or a really down and dirty way is just go over to the main, the first one over, go to load content, just go to your storage device, go to where all those folders are. And so for example, if I want to play a Nintendo 64 game, I'll just load up GoldenEye. And then it should go ahead and load the game like that. Now it's not as nice as... Um, you know, having it all fancy and set up, but this works just fine. Close the content, and I can easily just load content and go from system to system. As long as you install those emulators, I can just go system. So let's say like PlayStation, right? So go ahead and Mortal Kombat Trilogy. With PlayStation, do you want PBP files? If you got bin and Q files, you might run into some issues. You might have to reclassify those files. But as you see now, I'm playing PlayStation really easily. Again, if you want content, the actual emulation performance, I made a video just the other day of the performance of these emulators. Uh, another one would have been, another one would have been Mega Drive, Three Ninjas Kick Back, load it. So we're gonna do our Sega emulator we installed, and now we're playing Three Ninjas Kick Back. Okay, so you get the gist of it now. So I want to show you some other systems though. So let's go ahead and quit. And we're gonna go back into our Nvidia Shield. I've added these to my favorites, but to get these, you just go to the Google Play Store. The first one is Yaba Sanchero. You can find that in the Google Play Store, just search for it, install it. Once you install it, you'll open it. And this is a great Sega Saturn emulator for the Android and for this one. And so for this, we're actually gonna unzip your files so you get a bin and a queue. But let's just say like Mortal Kombat 2, we're gonna go ahead and launch the queue file. And there you go, we're playing Sega Saturn games. Great little emulator. I've had really good success with it. And you can easily upscale it, you can stretch your screen. Really great. With Nintendo 64, by the way, I kind of skipped over that pretty fast. You can absolutely upscale your Nintendo 64. And I recently did a whole entire video on that. Next up is PPSSP. I have way more luck and compatibility and I like the options better using the standalone version which I installed through the Google Play Store and I've added it to my favorites here. So you load this up and I could go to my games. I've already found them, but like God of War for example. And here you go. You can easily change your settings. It's in widescreen now. I'm showing my frame rate. If you want to see performance of this particular emulator, I went ahead and did a whole video on that as well. And you can see the performance. But in this video, I'm gonna focus on um, only showing the different emulators and how to set them up. The last one I wanna show is Redream, one of my favorite Dreamcast emulators. It is free or you gotta upgrade to premium. It's about $6 for HD. Now, let me go ahead and just pick, for example, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And as you see here, it's now loading and we're playing Dreamcast games. Really easy, a great front end. All right, and don't forget this is an Android device. So as you see here, it has all that stuff still open. You can go ahead and close them out if you want to. All right, so there you have it, the Nvidia Shield. This is the non-pro version. So you need a micro SD. Um, it does not run Dolphin Emulator because Dolphin Emulator is a 64-bit application and unfortunately this thing only runs 32-bit applications. Now, that's not too big of a deal breaker for me because the reason I got this device was 4K, it was under $150, I got it for $129 plus a 10% off coupon, so after tax it just came out to like right around $130 
and it was totally worth it. As other YouTubers have explained, this is well worth it at that price point. The Pro, although awesome, is $200. When you get to the $200, you can get a laptop for that price. You can really get into some other devices that start to push it for its value. So this is uh, going to emulate all that stuff just fine. All the consoles, everything from Atari, all the way up to Sega Saturn, Nintendo 64, Dreamcast, um, PSP, and really, really good, Not no frames skipped. You can easily play these games two player, four player. Um, as long as it's a Bluetooth controller, it's going to run just fine. If you have the Pro, you can run more wired controllers because it has more ports. But uh, there you have it the gist of getting this all set up and getting on and emulating. If you do have any questions, please comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.